I'm gonna tell you everything. Yes, everything there is to know about the Detective Conan story so far. Last time I made a video for those who wanted to watch the series but didn't want to watch a thousand episodes. So if you're interested in watching the series, then go check that video where I tell you what episodes are important and which ones are not. But if you don't want to watch it and just want to know what this is all about or you've seen the episodes but you don't remember anything, then keep watching because I'm gonna do a whole recap. And yes, I've included details from the manga, but if you anime watchers don't wanna get any spoilers, check the description to see until which parts of the video you can watch. Okay, let's just start. As you probably know, the story centers on high school detective Kudo Chinichi, who was drugged and unintentionally turned into a kid. Since he's supposed to be dead, he hides his identity to protect the ones close to him and now lives under the name of Edogawa Conan. He's currently living with his childhood friend and love interest, Mori Ran, and her father, Mori Kogoro, because he has a detective agency and believes it can help to get closer to the people who drugged him. Kogoro is a failed detective and Conan solves the cases for him without him knowing by putting him to sleep and imitating his voice with his bow tie device. Because of this, Kogoro has gained recognition and is now known as the famous detective Sleeping Kogoro. Ran's parents are separated, so her mom, who is a well-known lawyer, does not live with them. As for Chinichi's parents, he's the son of famous mystery writer Kudo Yusaku and former famous actress Kudo Yukiko, both of them living in the United States in the beginning of the series and both also know about Conan's real identity. Conan refers to the people who did this to him as the Black Organization. The first members we meet are Jin and Vodka. Jin gave Chinichi this new prototype pill with the intention of killing him, but he didn't know of the unusual side effect. He is a high-ranking member that is typically in charge of missions and is usually seen with his subordinate Vodka. Not much is known about this character's past, and he's seen as a very loyal member who doesn't mind killing and even has trouble remembering the names of the ones he has killed. The next very important character that appears in the story is Haibara Ai. Her real name is Miyano Shiho and was given the code name Sherry when she was in the organization. She's actually the creator of the APTX 4869, the pill that was given to Conan. She was involved with the black organization because of the investigation of her parents and when they died, she continued with their research. The pill she developed, even though it wasn't the objective, had the effect of working as a poison that kills without leaving any traces in the body, with Jin using Chinichi as the first human they tested it on. During experimentation, Sherry noticed that one of the lab mice got smaller instead of dying, but she didn't report the side effect. The black organization, unaware of this, when Chinichi's body couldn't be found, they ordered a search, where Sherry and a team went to his house. She noticed that his kid's clothes were gone and suspected that he had actually shrunk instead, but confirmed him as deceased to the organization. After she was given no explanation for her sister's death, she refused to keep working and eventually they can find her in a room to be executed. Having no other choice, she took the pill, expecting to die, but shrunk instead, which gave her the opportunity to escape. She went to Chinichi's house, but collapsed outside his neighbor's house, Professor Akasa, who took her in and eventually ended up living with her. She changed her name to Haibara Ai and revealed everything to Conan. Sometime later, they find Jin's car parked in the city, and Conan puts a tracker and a mic in his car. They find out that the organization was planning to kill a politician in a hotel and that a member named Pisco was in charge of doing it. Jin finds the tracker and thinks that Cherry put it there. Conan and Haibara fail to stop the assassination and Haibara gets kidnapped by Pisco, who put her in a wine cellar. Haibara drinks a Chinese alcoholic drink named Baiju, a drink that Conan accidentally drank in the past and gave him a one-time side effect of getting his body back for a short time. Recovering her adult body, Haibara manages to escape the wine cellar by climbing a chimney, but when she gets to the rooftop, Jin and Vodka were waiting for her. They shot her without killing her at first to interrogate her. Conan intercepts the fight and Haibara manages to jump back into the chimney. Back in the cellar, Conan saves Haibara again and tricks Pisco to accidentally cause a fire. Both of them escape and when Jin gets down, before Pisco could tell him that Sherry has shrunk, Jin shots him because he made a mistake in the assassination of the politician by being photographed. There was another member involved in this murder case that was helping Pisco, actress Chris Vignard with the code name Vermouth that afterwards lives with Jin and Vodka. 
Bermud came from America for this mission, but then decides to stay longer in Japan because she has some business to attend to. Then we see that her target is to find and kill Sherry. She is also a high-ranking member and was mentioned to be the boss's favorite, so she seems to have more independence and be more untouchable than the other members. She's an expert in the art of disguise, being able to imitate the looks and voice of basically anyone on the series. She developed a personal interest in Chinichi and Ran, mainly because they saved her life in New York when she was disguised as a serial killer. She calls Shinichi Silver Bullet, which means he's basically the only weapon that could destroy the organization, and also calls Ran Angel. Her age is unknown, since she has been living under two names without aging. She was known as the actress Sharon Mignard, where she became friends with Shinichi's mother Yukiko. Then she pretended to have a daughter under the name of Chris Mignard, with whom she supposedly didn't get along with to avoid being seen together in public. Later she faked Sharon's death and now is publicly living as Chris, since she still has a young looking appearance. Other known alive members of the organization are Chianti and Korn, both snipers, but so far not really relevant characters. Okay, now the FBI. First we have James Black. He is the head of the operations on the hunt for the black organization in Japan and is in charge of the FBI known agents. Next we have Akai Chuichi, one of the most important and best characters of the show. Then we have Jody Starling and finally Andre Kamel. When Jody was a kid, Vermouth killed her father. Jody's father was an FBI agent working for the organization and had a lot of files and information on them and on Vermouth. She met Kid Jody in the house after killing her father and told her that she should wait for him to wake up, handing her the glasses she was holding. When Jody asked who she was, she replied, a secret makes a woman woman, leaving her behind in the house that she then set on fire, hoping for Jody to die as well. But Jody ran to the store to buy some juice for her father and therefore she survived. All the evidence along with the body were burnt and the only thing Jody managed to keep are the glasses that she currently wears that belong to her father and that also had Bermud's fingerprints on them. When Bermud finds out that Jody wasn't in the house, she desperately looked for her, but since she was put under the protection of the FBI and in the witness protection program, she could not get her hands on her. Eventually, Jody became an FBI agent to find Bermud, following her along with the other FBI members from America when she came to Japan. In the current timeline, when Bermud was on her mission to kill Sherry, Jody was posing as an English teacher, working in Ran and Chinichi's high school under the name of Jody Santamillion. During this time, Bermud was taking the identity of Araide Tomoaki, a doctor that occasionally also worked in the same high school. When they finally confronted each other, due to Bermud finding Haibara and Jody trying to protect her, Jody got hurt when Calvados, another black organization member that was hiding, shot her to help Bermud. The Haibara that was in Jody's car was actually Conan in disguise, but Bermud put him to sleep with his own sleeping dart. The real Haibara arrived at the scene and was eventually protected by Ran, who was hiding in the trunk of the car. And since Bermud wasn't capable of hurting her, she couldn't get to Sherry. Akai Chuichi then appeared at the scene to help Jody, hurting Bermud, who managed to escape taking Conan as a hostage. Conan had a plan to make her surrender, and Bermud even told him that he wins and that she was going to leave Sherry alone. After that, she puts Conan to sleep and destroys the recording machine he had, finally escaping for good without hurting him. Even though she knows Conan and Haibara were turning to kids, she keeps the secret from the organization. Okay, now moving on to Akai Chuichi. He's an FBI agent that managed to infiltrate the black organization in the past. He was living under the name of Moroboshi Tai and was given the code name Rai. During his time in the black organization, he became romantically involved with Haibara's older sister, Miyano Akemi, who was a low-ranking member on Like Shiho. His intention at first was to get information and get closer to Shiho, but eventually he developed feelings for Akemi, making him break his relationship at that time with FBA partner Jody. After an opportunity to work under executive member Jim presented itself, the FBI planned a trap to capture him in the warehouse they were supposed to meet. But because of an old man appearing in the scene and FBI agent Andre Kamel telling him to get out because he was dangerous to be there, they discovered Akai's infiltration and Jin never appeared. 
After this, Akai became obviously an important enemy that the black organization is desperately trying to kill. Later, Akai confessed everything to Akemi and that he was using her, to which she responded that she already knew. He stopped contacting her for her safety, but even though Akemi was only important to the organization because of her sister's work, they decided to get rid of her anyway because her relationship with Akai was too risky. The organization told her that if she succeeded in a 1 billion yen bank robbery, she and her sister could leave the organization, with the intention of course of killing her when she failed. The day before the robbery, Akemi sends a text to Shuichi asking him to be her boyfriend for real if she manages to get out of the organization, and also with an unknown PS. Akemi gathers two partners and manages to pull off the robbery, but one of the partners betrays them and steals the money. She then goes to Kogoro's agency under the name of Hirota Masami, saying that she was looking for her missing father. Conan eventually finds the missing partner, and because of a fight between the three of them, two die, leaving Akemi with all the money. Later she goes to meet Jin, with Conan following her in secret. She asks Jin to release Shiho from the organization in exchange for the location of the money. Jin says she's too valuable to let go and kills Akemi instead. Because of Chuichi being a traitor and Jin being his target, plus Jin killing Akemi, they basically hate each other to death. Okay, moving on to another infiltrated character, Kir. Her civilian identity is that of a TV reporter named Mitsunashi Rena. Her real name is Hondo Hidemi and she's an undercover CIA agent. In the past, her father Hondo Ethan was also an undercover CIA agent. He committed suicide in order to save Hidemi from being discovered by the organization. Her initial mission was to inform her father of his new middleman agent, since the current one was killed. Then she was supposed to fake her death to leave the organization, but she didn't realize she was being followed when she met with her father. He then made it seem like she was the one who killed him after being discovered as a traitor by her. He told her to complete the mission and wait for an ally to eventually appear. She also has a younger brother named Hondo Eisuke, with whom she lost contact with when he was a kid, since she moved to the US to become a CIA agent and then ended up involved with the organization. Eisuke came to Tokyo looking for his lost sister and had been investigating newscaster Mizuna Shirena because of the similarities. The TV reporter had recently contacted Kogoro for a trivial case of someone ringing her doorbell and leaving sleeping pills on the doorstep. Conan left a bug to discover the culprit, and then they found out it was just a kid that was a fan of Mizuna Shirena. But the bug Conan left eventually got stuck under her shoe, making him discover that she was actually a member of the organization when he heard her contact Jin. They were planning to kill a politician, having Rena interview him in sight of the snipers. Of course, after learning this, Conan and the FBI decided to intervene, and when they ruined their plans, the black organization turned to plan B, making Rena pursue the target in a motorbike. When the FBI was chasing her to capture her, an accident occurred and Rena got injured, falling into a coma. Jim finds the tracker in Kier's shoe that was left in his car when she changed clothes, and deduces it was Kogoro who put it there. They go to his agency to kill him, but Conan and Akai manage to intervene again, making them believe that it was the FBI that put the tracker and that Kogoro was only a bait. But Jin does not believe Kogoro is completely innocent. The FBI then took custody of Kir, taking her to a hospital and guarding her until she wakes up. Eisuke had approached Kogoro because he was the last person to have contact with Mizuna Shirena before the accident. He then starts hiding in the hospital, trying to get to Rena's room to confirm whether she is actually his sister or not. When finally reaching her, and after she wakes up, she tells him that she is his sister, and Conan and Akai intervene, saying that they know she is a CIA agent as well as her late father. Eisuke obviously hearing this for the first time. They don't give Eisuke more information, and they make him leave, so they can make a plan to return Hidemi to the organization without them suspecting she is a spy, and also an FBA ally now. She also said that the only reason she met with Kogoro with that silly case is because she wanted to ask him for help protecting Eisuke. Eisuke eventually leaves and decides to become a CIA agent as well. He also discovered Conan's identity. After returning Kier with the plan of having the black organization rescue her while she was being moved out of the hospital, the organization suspected that it was too easy to get her back. 
so Jin ordered Kier to get in contact with Akai and ask to meet with him by saying she needed help to leave the organization and was willing to give information. After this, they met in the Raiha Pass, where Jin and Vodka were watching and listening from afar, ending up with Kier shooting Akai, making the organization and the FBI believe Akai was dead. After the fake death events planned by Conan, Kier and Akai, he now creates a new identity of an engineering student named Okiya Subaru and starts living in Chinichi's currently unoccupied house. Kier also informed that another member of the organization was on the move to find Sherry again, under the code name Verben. The next new character to appear is a girl named Sera Masumi, a new student in Rans High School and also a high school detective, who turned out to be Akai's little sister, who also thinks he's dead. Verben's identity was revealed to be a new character called Amuro Toru, a new waiter in the Café Poirot under Kogoro's detective agency that also asked to be his apprentice. He approached Kogoro since it was suspected that he may be connected to Sherry, due to the microphone and tracker found the first time in Jin's car that supposedly Sherry implanted, and the second one in Kier's shoe, being of the same type. Amuro's real name is Furuya Rei, and he's actually a National Police Agency Security Bureau undercover agent. Ray, also known as Zero, went to the police academy and was friends with four other known police characters. Two of them were Hagiwara Kenji and Matsuda Jinpe, who became members of the Tokyo Police Bomb Squadron. Kenji died in a case following a serial bomber in Shinjuku seven years before the current timeline. When four years later the bomber resurfaced, Matsuda was currently partnered with Sato Miwako, a recurrent police detective, who had fallen in love with him. Matsuda gets involved in a series of bombings due to his personal interest in capturing Kenji's killer, but eventually gets trapped in a ferris wheel with a bomb where he was forced to die. Another old partner of Rei was Date Wataru, who became an officer in the Criminal Investigation 1st Division, and eventually was assigned to be the mentor of Takagi Wataru, another recurring police detective. He got caught up in an accident and died one year ago in the current timeline. The last one is Morofushi Hiromitsu. He, along with Rei, became members of the Public Security Bureau, PSB, and he was also infiltrated in the Black Organization with the code name Scotch. He's also the younger brother of Nagano Police agent Morofushi Takaaki. Rei and his four friends have a spin off manga focused on their academy days called Wild Police Story that is also being adapted as part of the main anime. When Rei and Akai were in the organization, Rei saw him as his rival, and none of them knew of their undercover identities at that time. One time, Rei received a text from Scotch saying that his identity as PSB had been discovered, and that the only way out is going to the other world. When Bourbon goes to find him, he sees Rei holding a gun and Scotch lying dead covered in blood. Rei tells him that traitors must be punished. In reality, when Akai finds Scotch, he tries to commit suicide, but Akai stops him, preventing the trigger from being pulled, explaining that he is an FBI agent and that he is on his side. When they hear footsteps approaching, both believing other organization members were coming, Scotch manages to pull the trigger, killing himself shooting through his phone to prevent his identity and more information to be found. It is ironic that Verven was the one to arrive at the scene, unintentionally provoking his friend's death without him knowing. Akai made him believe that he was the one who killed him for being a traitor and that accidentally shot his phone. It was suspicious to Verven the blood marks on the fingers and he came to the conclusion that it was a forced suicide, but not understanding why. After this, he sent a package with the phone inside to Date Wataru to be passed to Scotch's older brother. But because of Date's dead, the package remained unseen for an entire year. When the police finally discovered it, they passed it to Tagaki, who saw the phone and understood his younger brother had died on a mission, and also recognized the sender as Ray, under the alias Zero. From the day Scotch died, Bourbon holds a grudge towards Akai. Unsatisfied and not believing he was dead, with the permission of the boss, he started an investigation to confirm his suspicions. At first, he appeared disguised as Akai with a scar on his face, where he started to show himself in front of people close to him to see the reactions and corroborate his death. Since FBI members were not involved in the fake death plan, except for James Black, Jody actually believed that Chuichi was dead, and because of her genuine reactions along with the other people he tested, like his sister Sera, he was convinced Akai was really dead. 
At some point, he sneaks into Gogoro's office and finds a video of Haibara in her adult form saving the detective boys from a fire. This video was sent by Mitsuiko to Gogoro because he wanted to find this mysterious girl to thank her. In a previous case, Haibara was forced to turn back to her adult form to save the kids' lives, taking one of the prototype antidotes that she has been developing. Amuro also noticed in the video that she was wearing a ring pass for the Bell Tree Express mystery train. But suddenly, someone started hacking the system that turned out to be Subaru. Then, he reports to the organization that Cherry was going to be on that train. He and Bermud go to the train with the plan to isolate Cherry in one of the train cars so then they could detach it with explosives and have a helicopter waiting to capture her. But, unknown to Bourbon, Bermud put explosives inside the train car planning to actually kill her instead of capturing her alive. Inside the train, Bermud disguises herself as Scar Akai to get Sera out of the way. She was expecting Sherry when she found out the organization was on the train to temporarily turn back to hide her child form and get away from her friends to avoid putting them in danger. Bermud also encounters Conan's mom and friend Yukiko on the train who requested her that if they win again this time she would have to leave Sherry alone for good. She also interrogates her for her non-aging situation saying that one of the reasons she doesn't tell the organization about Conan and Haibara has to do with her not wanting her co-workers to know and investigate more about her secret. Bourbon eventually confronts Cherry and tells her that she probably heard his codename before and that he knew her parents and sister. Haibara tells him that he has heard of him and that he was her sister's boyfriend's rival. When Bourbon asks her to go in the carriage, she goes in and tells him that it's full of explosives, making Bourbon realize Bermud's real intentions, asking Cherry to come with him instead. In that moment, the silhouette of Scar Akai appears in front of Bourbon and throws a grenade, successfully detaching the train car. When Bermud hears this, she immediately activates explosives and the car finally explodes with Cherry inside. When they leave the train, Bermud informs Jin that Cherry was successfully killed, but then she sees how Haibara was being carried by Professor Agasa and overhears that Kaito Kid was on the train as well, realizing that she was tricked, recognizing her defeat. It turned out to be that the adult Cherry Bourbon confronted was Kaito Kid disguised as part of Conan's plan, who was also saying what Haibara was indicated to him, that managed to escape the explosion with his hang glider cape. Bourbon, on the other hand, was still fixed on the Akai that appeared, that actually was the real one, and went back to reopen the case of him not being dead. After these events, Bermud asks Bourbon why is he staying close to Gogoro now that Cherry's dead, actually respecting what Yukiko asked, and he says that his interest was awakened by something else. After continuing with his investigation again, and after an interaction with Jody and Kamel, he gets the final clue deducing how Akai faked his death, and who his current identity is. Therefore, he goes to Subaru's house to interrogate him. At the same time, Jody and Kamel start putting the pieces together as well, and go to the Raiha Pass, where Akai died, to get more clues. Bourbon tells Subaru that he knows everything and that right now he has men chasing his colleagues so he should reveal himself unless he wants to put them in danger. Subaru pretending not to know what he's talking about takes off the face mask he was wearing stating that he has a cold. Bourbon opens his collar looking for the voice changing device but finds nothing. At the same time while Jody and Kamel were being chased, the real Akai reveals himself in the back of the car. Akai shoots the tire from one of the cars and ends the pursuit. Then he orders Kamel to go back to them. They were all police agents that were informing Ray that Akai actually appeared there. Akai takes the phone and speaks with Bourbon, saying that he knows he is Furuya Ray, and even though it was a good plan to want to capture him, to hand him over to the organization, to get a higher rank and closer to the boss, he shouldn't lose sight of the real enemy, and that he actually does not want to be his enemy. Finally, he tells him that he still feels bad for what happened to him, referring to Scotch. After this, Bourbon tells his man to retreat and apologizes to Subaru for intruding and that he had mistaken him for someone else. When Bourbon leaves the house, it is revealed that Yusaku was disguised as Subaru and that the face mask was another device for changing his voice. And Bourbon does not inform the organization that Akai is alive, and at the same time, Kier informs again that another member is on the move. This time, code name Rom. Around this point in the story, another interesting character appears, Haneda Chukichi. 
He's at first known as Miyamoto Yumi's ex-boyfriend, who is a recurring police traffic officer. Chukichi is a professional shogi player who wants to win all seven shogi titles to prove himself to Yumi, who has no idea about his intentions. He's later revealed to be the middle brother of Akai and Sera. Okay, let's take a look at the Akai family now. The father of the Akais is a Japanese man named Akai Tsutomu, who married a British woman named Mary Sera. Both of them are members of the British Secret Intelligence Service, also known as MI6. They were living in England, and 17 years before the current timeline, Tsutomu got implicated in a case where the black organization was involved. After this, he tells Mary that he got involved with horrible people and that they should escape to Japan to be more safe. He then disappears and is believed to be dead, but the body has never been found. This incident with his father motivated Chuichi to move to America and join the FBI to investigate his father's disappearance and find the ones responsible. Mary, who was at that time pregnant with Masumi, goes to Japan with Chukichi, both of the kids being raised in Japan. While Akai goes to the US to study, hiding his real purpose to his mom. Seven years later, Akai flies to Japan and goes to the beach with his family, meeting his sister for the first time. There he has a fight with his mom for his obsession in finding the truth behind his father's disappearance, where Mary eventually gives up, telling him to uncover everything. On the beach, they get involved in a robbery case and meet Yukiko and seven-year-old Chinichi and Ran, where Chinichi introduces himself as Holmes's apprentice. After the incident, Masumi ends up calling Chinichi a magician, but doesn't tell him why. Three years before the current timeline, Mary gets information of Sutomu being seen in London, so she moves back to England with Masumi. In the present time, Mary meets with Tsutomu in the Box Hall Bridge, but turned out to be Bermud in disguise, who trapped her and forced Mary to take the APTX 4869, turning her into a child. When she returns with Masumi, thinking of what to do now, there happened to be a tennis match on TV playing in the background, from a previous case where Conan appears in television saying that he is Holmes's apprentice. They both remember the same looking kid they met at the beach years ago saying the same and start to investigate him. They came to the conclusion that he was actually Chinichi, who was also turned into a kid, and even managed to return to his body temporarily to get on the plane and be able to travel. Then, they both moved back to Japan to get closer to Chinichi and the antidote, and are currently living in various hotels. Sera is constantly harassing Conan, asking him questions, and it's pretty clear to him that she knows his secret, but he always manages a way to get out. Sera trusts Conan, but Mary is suspicious and is testing his ability abilities to see if he can become a worthy ally. Sera also seems pretty interested in Haibara, and suspects her as well. She also has had a few encounters with Subaru, noticing a few similarities with her brother, but nothing concrete to reveal his true identity yet. Chukichi, on the other hand, was adopted by a rich family when he was trying to become a professional shogi player, and since the son of the family, Haneda Koji, had died, they wanted him to fulfill his dream. But Yumi said that the main reason he was adopted was because he was really obsessed with shogi. He also keeps in touch with his siblings. He helps his sister with her deductive deductions sometimes over the phone, but doesn't tell her what he's doing or where he is. He's also in touch with his older brother with a separate phone and knows he's not dead. And one time he asked him to protect his girlfriend Yumi when she got involved in a murder case targeting policewoman. Chukichi doesn't know about his mother's condition and has been trying to get in touch with her. On the other hand, Conan knows Mary is the mother of the Akais and currently a kid, while Akai suspects it, thinking he'll believe it when he sees it with his own eyes. Even though Akai and Kona talk very freely and share a lot of information in the cases, and Akai knows about Kona's true identity, Conan hasn't officially admitted to him yet, and they haven't discussed the drug with each other either. Continuing with the family, we now know that Mary Sera is actually the sister of Miyano Elena, the mother of Haibara and Akemi. Elena, a British foreigner, married Japanese man Miyano Atsushi. Atsushi was known as a mad scientist because of his unconventional theories and was unpopular in the scientific community. He left his inherited house to a friend and started working in a pharmaceutical company named Shirohato. Five years later, the company was bought by a bigger one, but it didn't go well, so it went to bankruptcy. 
they decided then to open a private small medical clinic under the name of Miyano Clinic. Akemi was born around this time. It is also seen that a kid Furuyare was constantly getting into fights because of his hair color and visited the clinic often where Elena would cure him. She was surprisingly friendly with him since she was a very reserved and quiet woman and it was because she could relate to being half Japanese. At this time, Atsushi said that a company was offering to fund his research but that he was going to decline because he didn't want to leave Elena alone with the clinic and also because her sister said that they were suspicious, in addition to the sponsor being the Karasuma group, who had a lot of bad rumors going around them. Elena said that he shouldn't give up on his dream and that if they pay well, they could close the clinic and she could join his research. She also told him that she was pregnant with Shiho, which made him reconsider the offer. Elena tells Raid he shouldn't fight anymore and sometime later that she's going away, so she won't be able to cure him anymore. The Millanos start working for the organization and, according to Vermouth, continuing with a previous research. Shortly after Shiho was born, a lab fire accident occurred where Elena and Atsushi both died along with most of the research. However, they knew something was going to happen since Elena left four tapes numbered 1 to 20 for Shiho to listen to on her birthdays. These tapes were entrusted to Akemi to pass to her, which she managed to keep from the organization and hide in her father's old house where Haibara eventually finds them. In one of the tapes, Elena tells Shiho that she is making a truly terrifying drug at the moment and that their lab mates are saints like a dream drug. She tells her that their father and her are putting their hopes up and are calling it the silver bullet, but in order to complete the drug they will have to leave both her and her sister, asking her to understand. To which Haibara says that she doesn't understand why she created a drug that should never have existed. After her parents' death, Chiho was sent to the US to study, while Akemi remained in Japan. Then she's known to be working for the organization at least since she was 13 and that a lot of her research was based on the surviving files from the fire at her parents' lab, where she continued with their work and eventually created the new version of the APTX 4869. She also said that even if she had heard from a lot of members that her parents died in an accident, in reality the organization wanted to create a different drug from the one being created by them. Akemi, on the other hand, had a pretty normal life, despite being constantly watched by the organization, but she always wanted to get her sister out of that investigation. Akai and Akemi dated each other without knowing they were cousins. Also, in present time, Akai is constantly protecting Haibara. Finally, let's talk about the Haneda Koji murder case that happened 17 years before the present timeline. Akai Sutomu was friends with Koji's father, and he was the one that asked for his help to uncover the truth behind his son's death. Haneda Chukichi once mentioned that the shogi player he admired was called Haneda Koji, and that he was his non-related brother, taking the last name of his family, who adopted him. Haibara then remembers that Koji's name was in the list of people that the APTX 4869 was given to, just two names under Chinichi, and that under status it was written deceased. Koji was a talented shogi player who went to the US to participate in a chess tournament. He and Amanda Hughes, an elderly wealthy American woman who was his fan, were both killed under mysterious circumstances in their hotel rooms. The room of Koji had been dismantled and there were signs of a fight between him and his killer, but the cause of death was never clarified. The death of Amanda Hughes was also not clear and the main suspect in both murders was Amanda's bodyguard, who she called Asaka. Asaka has never been found and their real identity is a mystery. Haibara believes it is a black organization member and states that the drug they gave Koji was her parents' version of the pill. She thinks they killed Koji for being involved with Amanda Hughes since she was a very influential woman with contacts in the FBI and CIA. It was also stated that they had met in Koji's room before the incident, since a lot of her fingerprints were found, including in the door handle, sofa, teacups, knife, and fork. When Koji's room was found, there were a lot of broken plates and crystals, including a mirror with the initial reading of put on mascara. Haibara says it is weird that the organization left such a messy crime scene since they usually don't leave any traces and clean the scenes completely. Amanda's room was also a mess and even the sink was left open. Also, someone has been constantly updating and re-uploading the case information online, sharing all these little details as if they were asking for help to solve this old case. 
Akai and Conan deduced that the dying message from Koji, involving the remaining letters from the mirror, formed two names, Asaka and Rom, which they assume are the same person. Haibara tells him that Rom is the second man in charge in the organization and that nobody knows the real identity. Some claim is a strong-built man, others that he has a feminine appearance, and others say that he is an old man. But one thing was clear, and it is that Rom has an artificial eye. From this, three new characters appear as possible Roms. One of them is Kuroda Hyoe, former Nagano Police First Division Chief and currently the Tokyo Police Superintendent. He's also in contact with Amuro and apparently his boss, since he is aware of his undercover situation, calling him Bourbon. He was in an accident in the past where he lost his right eye and spent 10 years in a coma. He originally had black hair and it is said that he looks like a completely different person after the incident, also missing a few memories. He calls Conan Kogoro's bag of wisdom. The second suspect was Wakasarumi, a character that appears as the children's new school teacher. She seems and acts like a really clumsy person, but in reality is a really skilled fighter. She had an unknown relationship with Koji. She carries his shogi bishop, which was his good luck charm, and was the only item missing from his personal belongings after the incident. She had a flashback of him dead and called him a foolish person. She also has a list of the victims of the pill and has scars on her upper arms and back, and also some problem with her right eye. Kurala seems to have some knowledge on her and is currently studying the Koji case and spying on her as well. Haibara seems to trust her, but Conan doesn't. The last suspect and the real Rom was revealed to be someone currently disguised under the name Wakita Kanenori, working as a chef in a restaurant next to Kogoro's detective agency, and also as his new apprentice. Kogoro was targeted again after being involved in a current case where someone called him and claimed to have new information on the Haneda Koji case, saying that the bodyguard, Asaka, was seen holding a mirror and that it was a woman, but this information is not stated to be from a reliable source. Jin says he doesn't care about the case Rom screwed up in the past, but wonders if Kogoro is investigating, and if that's the case, he should be killed while he sleeps. What we know about Rom is that he has an artificial left eye and changes his voice when talking to his subordinates to keep his identity a secret. He was involved in the Haneda Koji case from 17 years ago and apparently made a big mistake. He was also the old man that caused Kamel to make a mistake back then when Chuichi was discovered as an FBI agent. Then he sent a picture of Akai and Kamel to Korn and instructed to kill them if he ever saw them. After a recent case of FBI agent serial murders, they encountered Kamel, but thanks to the help from Conan and Akai, he manages to fake his death and escape, reporting afterwards that he heard from Vodka that Rom was currently disguised under a silly name and appearance. In the current event, when Chinichi takes an antidote to go to a school trip, he again solves the case, but fails to go unnoticed, ending up in the news for not being dead as everyone believed. They manage to cover up the situation, thanks to Chinichi's parents and Hattori Heiji, his rival detective friend, saying that the person they saw was Okita Soshi, a student from a Kyoto school who was also on the trip. However, Rom, not completely believing the cover-up, orders Bourbon to investigate Chinichi. Amuro infiltrates the Kudos house, but Akai is waiting for him in his real appearance, and they both point guns at each other. After that, the Kudos appear and ask him to calm down and have a little talk together. It is unknown what happened after that. At the same time, Shinichi's parents decide to stay in Japan, since Yusaku tells Shinichi that he had a different conclusion to the letters from the Koji case, saying that they didn't mean Asaka and Rom, but only one name, Karasuma and that that means that now they are in a dangerous situation and need to think of a plan. Rom then asks Vermouth to investigate Yusaku and why he's staying in Japan. And so it was revealed to us that the identity of the boss is someone called Karasuma Renya. He was a really influential multimillionaire and according to Yusaku the most powerful person in Japan in his time. He supposedly died at the age of 99 under mysterious circumstances half a century before the current timeline. This character first appeared in the chapter 300 of the manga and in the episode 219 of the anime. 
This episode was actually a two-hour special about a reunion between famous detectives who were invited to an old mansion called the Sunset Manor to look for a hidden treasure. This mansion actually belonged to Garasuma once, who couldn't solve the riddle years ago, and even conducted a massacre in order to get the treasure, but eventually failed. Later in the story, Conan figures out the phone number of the boss, which is encoded as a children's song named Nanatsu no Ko. Conan asks Haibara if she knows the identity of the boss, to which she responds, who knows, and that he shouldn't use that number, since it's like opening Pandora's box. We don't hear much more about the boss until Yusaku's discovery. Vermut also has an unknown relationship with him that only Verve knows, and he uses her secret to make her help him sometimes. The boss also founded the Shady Karasuma Group, a big company with a bad reputation from operating illegal activities, but also the richest in the detective Conan world, that also founded the Millanos Research. The Black Organization, on the other hand, is a secret criminal syndicate whose main purpose is still unknown. We know that all members are given a code name of an alcoholic drink, that they commit various crimes and are involved in mysterious research projects. The APTX 4869 is still a prototype and is also referred to as the incomplete detective. Pisco says to Sherry after seeing her as a kid that he is impressed that she could advance the drug to that point. Vermouth was against the Millanos research and called it foolish. Haibara mentions to Conan that it is a project that they have been working on for at least 50 years. So that's it everyone, I try to cover as much as possible, but obviously there's still a lot more information of the show that I didn't get to cover. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And uh, to finish, I'm going to leave you with a picture of a guy without his hat. See you!